Have you ever seen an engagement video and you're like, ah, oh, yeah, that's gonna end in divorce. So uh, I had some BB, you know what, over the weekend and I changed my mind. This is my preference now. <laughs> this is my preference now. Uh, this or nothing. Okay, wait, make, make. That's what happens when somebody gets run through. Yeah. I don't relate to those posts that are like, yes, I'll have attitude because I miss you and I can't see you. Not me. I'm going to see somebody else, okay? Guess my body count. 20. 20? Yeah, I'm going to say about, about 20. 20? Oh my gosh, that's so nice. <laughs> Not sure if the guys, they are being too nice or modest, but like, come on, 20 this one? She's over 100 bodies, this one. What, what, what do you look for in a man? I don't look for anything in a man. I don't look for a man. I mean, when you meet a man, you talk to him. I don't him. look for nothing in a man. A rich man that gives you money or broke man that give you love? Of course, first one. Why do you ask me this question? If you have a crush on a guy, don't worry. Just get to know him and it'll go away. For some guys, but for some guys, you actually fall in love with that person. 18 year olds trying to talk to me. I'm like, you don't even remember Britney Spears' career. I have a theory that all boyfriends have a threat radar. That is to say, whenever their girlfriend meets a new guy, they immediately assess the level of threat that guy poses. And that then decides the course of action they take. For example, this morning I was on my phone. I was like, oh, this guy followed me on TikTok. I swear I've met him before. I just can't remember where. And Dave was silent for like a split second. And then he goes, let's see. So I show him. It's a male influencer who's obviously gay. And he goes, okay, cool. And I said to him, you're not threatened because he's gay, huh? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> Men don't want their girlfriends to be around men that will potentially sleep with them. We don't want your girl to be around guys that want to sleep with them. But if you, I see that your male friend is gay, he can't sleep with you, I won't have problems with it. But like in a situation where the guy is straight, come on, man. Let's talk about thirst traps because men don't know, men don't even know. You post a thirst trap, it's like thousands in your DMs. And they don't know what that's like. Like, they really don't know what that's like. We actually know, and that's the reason why most of men are against the, uh, the whole idea of their girlfriends posting uh, thirst pictures on IG. You know, few men or there are no men that are okay in their head that will be okay, baby, post some pictures on Instagram because of the same reason. And sometimes when you see that, we always know that these ones belong to the streets. The question is, where's how Joe? Are you, how are you Where, guys doing? Where's Joe? Um, he's pretty pissed off with me. So he's been, um, I think he's at his sister's house. He's not talking to me right now. So, yeah. Keisha, how long ago, obviously, we saw in the video that Joe's saying he had no idea that you had this account. How long, how long is the account, have you had the page? Um, I've had the page for at least over a year. Um, it's on my Instagram and my LinkedIn, but that's what happens when you don't pay attention to your wife, period. Um, and, you know, he has a friend that he's been entertaining and she decided that, you know, she wants to really put a wrench, a bigger, you know, wedge in our relationship. So she went digging around my page and was like, oh, do you know that she has this? And it blew up from that. I mean, it's no secret Joe's financial issues, you know. Mm -hmm. and Why do I feel like she's still advertising this stuff? The fact that she has to explain that her uh, uh, thin uh, account or page is linked to uh, social platforms. She's advertising so that you go and see and subscribe so that you can, she can make more money. <laughs> I have always made a good life for myself, you know. Um, before I met Joe, I was living overseas in Europe. 
and I had established myself as a singer, you know, and I came back here, you know, thinking that with his persona and who he was, once we got together and I found out who he was, that it would only take off you know, other things, but, you know, not everybody's hustle and drive are the same. And depression is a serious thing also. So, you know, I've been just like, you know, supporting and dealing and going through his trials and tribulations with him. Um, I've started several businesses, you know, I've, I've been doing a lot like, and I just was, I just figured out like figure out, I have a home in Cape Verde I'm trying not to lose and a, and a roof over here we're trying to maintain that we almost got kicked out of. So I just kicked in the drive and did what I had to do, you know, and he won't do it. So I had to. And I'm sorry, you knew I was an adult video star when you met me. So if my survival, if I would do anything for my own survival, then what makes you think that would change now when I retired from the adult okay so the justification guys the bottom line is that the ones that belong to the streets they always go back to the streets when the street calls so this one here she got that call to go back to the streets industry i promise myself if i don't sing i don't eat so when you know my music career wasn't popping here when i left germany and i stayed here for him i figured you know I would, you know, start a business. I started a puppy friend social club. It's the dog sitting business. And then COVID happened and that screwed everything up. I have a, a moving company, you know, that he actually works for me. Like he works for my moving company. You know, it, I'm tired of being the one. That, so I figured it out the best way I know that can maximize the money that needs to come in because I'm tired of living like, you know, I'm tired of living yeah. minimal, you know. It's not it's not fair. And I don't understand how you could have had such a maximized life and be so content. This is ridiculous. But we've been together for almost 13 years, though. We've been together since 2012, like after his retirement. And it really wasn't a retirement that he wanted. It was a forced retirement because he just got locked out after the lockout in the 2011 lockout. You guys remember, right. you know, he just never got a new job. Nobody wanted him anymore. So, you know. There was a depression and I've been going, you know, dealing with all of this stuff. And I'm sorry, you know, uh, that I, I'm not sorry for what I'm doing. I'm just sorry that he can't understand that it's not, that wasn't a selfish um, decision. It was a decision that I made. I made an executive decision when my man wasn't taking the lead. I really love Joe. Um, I just, I love him. Um, if we were, like, if he never speaks to me again, I still will do things to help him or whatever I can because he's my family. You know, he's like an intricate part of my life and I just want the best for us. I wish he wanted that also. That's really where I'm at. You know, I wish that he wanted the best for us because he's not really wanting the best for himself. So I can't expect him to do for him what he, for me, what he can't do for himself, I guess. And that's why I just did what I had to do.